and support begins in three, two, one. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Nurture and Support, a recommendation podcast. I'm Kelly Tool at K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L on Twitter. And with me is Mel. Hey, everybody. It's Mel at Karmic9 on Twitter. And yay, we're back with more recommendations and sadly, no guest. But yeah. we'll have another guest for you soon. That's right. We're working we're working on that. Uh, I think we've clearly established in some earlier shows that guests equal less work for Mel and <laughs> Kelly equals good and uh, plus yeah. plus unique, new and different perspectives, which is kind of another thing that's pretty cool too. But the the less work thing, I'm a I'm a fan of as well. So we are definitely fans of less work. Not that we don't love you, and we're not willing to work, but you know, really. But yeah, but let's let's be real. <laughs> you know, it's a balance. It's a balance. Um, so while, while we may not work real hard, we want you to by sending us lots of recommendations, suggestions, comments, reviews on iTunes, and all those good things. And you know the drill. There's lots of places you can do that. Um, Nurtureandsupport.net uh, is the the blog that has all the podcasts, and you can comment on there. We'd love to hear from you there, and you can give us recommendations there. It provides a handy link to nurtandsup at gmail.com, where you can email Mel and I, uh, an email inbox that we try and get back to on a more regular basis these days to make sure. Also, there's Nurt and Sup on Twitter. Uh, certainly, you can tweet, tweet at that as well. Uh, and then we're on iTunes, and if you get a chance, of course, on iTunes and you like the show, we'd love, love, love for you to uh, write a recommendation or a review, rather, in iTunes to help us against the evil knitting podcasts in our category. So I think that's all our contact. And am I missing anything, Mel? No. Nope, I think that was it. And you can always uh, hit us up at our personal Twitter handles as well. So that's yes. why we that's why we introduce ourselves with them. Yes, very active. There are alter egos. <laughs> yeah, it uh, that was um, on Twitter the other day. Someone had, but they had tweeted out that uh, said, you know, there's a fine line between inappropriate social behavior and Twitter. Was the tweet, and <laughs> that was the response back was, oh, so you follow Kelly Tool and So Matt Kelly, and so So Matt Kelly, which. Quasi recommendation. Maybe he'll be my Twitter rec. Matter of fact, we'll make him. You know, spoiler alert. He'll be our my Twitter recommendation for today. He, uh, both he and I, are viewed as, at least by some individuals, as uh, socially inappropriate. So yes, that's my alter ego because I'm very socially appropriate in person, but maybe on Twitter I'm not so much. All right. Good times. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get us started off. And what I am going to recommend is a movie. And, uh, again, the best kind of movie, the kind of movie you can watch for free on the interwebs. Uh, and the name of the movie is The Transient. You can find it, probably the easiest way to find it, and this starts to be a bit of a spoiler for the theme of Transient, but if you go to the website killvampirelincoln.com, uh, you will, Kill Vampire Lincoln is actually a collection of movies that this group out of central Illinois, Champaign-Urbana, uh, has uh, they put together? They've got uh, films, uh, a number of films that they've put together. With um, the transient being the uh, the, the best Premier? of them. It's the pre- <laughs> There's a once upon t- once upon the time in the 70s, which is a punk science fiction action adventure period web series, probably okay. set in an alternative 1970s, <laughs> which is pretty good. Mm-hmm. The University of Illinois versus the Mummy. Uh, also kind of handy, but the transient is the one I'm recommending for today, and it is indeed the warm, heartwarming story of a um, a vigilante, a homeless vigilante, and his caseworker Stephen. Uh, actually, his homeworker, his ho- his caseworker Steve, Steve Douglas, as in Stephen Douglas, as they try to stop vampire Abraham Lincoln and his gang of 1980s punks. From sucking the blood of four score and seven virgins. Uh, oh, no. so, <laughs> so this is a pretty awesome movie. It's only twenty five minutes long, so I'm not even. It's not even a big investment of your time. Okay. Um, okay. Wait a minute. So this is set in the eighties. This yeah. I know, I know this is all, all kind of confusing. 
uh, they are 80s punks. Uh, I don't know if they're transplanted 80s punks, but uh, I think it was more current day, but these are kind of people that are backdated in terms of their dress, but not to be confused with the other, <laughs> the other stuff uh, in the 70s. So there's, there's, a, there's a variety of things, and they've got a couple decades they like. But the transient... Okay, so they think they're actually going to find four score and seven virgins. Apparently, that's their theory. Okay. Uh, and so how many is a score? Is that 20? It's, it's more than they're going to find. <laughs> okay. That's all I can yeah. say. Well, if you're scoring, yeah, I don't think. <laughs> it, but, uh, okay. yeah, so, uh, so so it's, you know, you've got a homeless vigilante and his caseworker. They're going after Abraham Lincoln, who's a vampire. So it's just awesome from there. One of the absolute coolest things about this movie uh, is Michael Krebs plays Abraham Lincoln. Michael Krebs is actually one of the most respected Abraham Lincoln impersonators in the world. When uh, they did a reenactment, the reenactment of Lincoln's inauguration, filmed in Washington, D.C., when they actually kind of did that and released it as a TV movie, he played Lincoln. When they did a, one of the television versions of the Lincoln-Douglas debates, the Galesburg debate, he played Lincoln in that. So he does look very much like Lincoln. He does a very good Lincoln. And I, for the life of me, I don't know why he agreed <laughs> to say, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be a vampire Lincoln in this movie. So this is not Abraham Lincoln. He wanted Lincoln. to be a bad guy for once. What's that? He wanted to be a bad guy for once. And he got, he got his chance. And it's, it is, you know, these are young filmmakers, the – the production quality effects, acting, with the exception uh, of Michael Krebs, probably reflect, you know, that they're, they're good at their craft, but they're still learning their craft, if you will. But it's, it's, just, it's just fun. As a matter of fact, all their stuff is fun. So you go to Kill Vampire Link and you can see all the different things. But the Transient is the one I'm recommending. Uh, I have a Kill Vampire Link t-shirt that glows in the dark, by the way, which is a really cool one of uh, the Abraham, the Michael Krebs, Abraham Lincoln face with bat wings coming out of the ears, kind of. It's a very cool looking shirt. Um, That's cool. And, I, I have a slight problem with glow in the dark. I, I really, really like anything that glows in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I have quite the collection. That's, so there, that's uh, something new I've learned about. I wasn't aware yeah. that you were a big glow-in-the-dark fan. So yeah, I do. I have many T-shirts that glow in the dark, and I even, uh, in my crafting, I like to do polymer clay stuff, too, and they make glow-in-the-dark polymer clay, so I like to make little skulls out of glow-in-the-dark polymer clay. <laughs> Just one of those little things. Is it not, stuff? not dark at all. No, not not at all. That seems, yeah, that it seems glows. perfect. That makes perfect sense. That's a great. Yeah. So there you go. I make glow in the dark skulls. There, there cool. we go. It's my deep dark secret. Well, I'm I'm recommending a movie where uh, one of our greatest presidents is a vampire. So, yes. so maybe we're uh, maybe we're uh, we're even on that. It yeah. does have uh, 7.8 stars in um, in IMDb. Wow. So, so you got that going. That's impressive. Uh, so it's a uh, it's worth a it's worth a look. So uh, 25 minutes. You do a search on Kill Vampire Lincoln or go to killvampirelincoln.com. You'll be able to see it be able to look at some of their other things. Uh, highly enjoyable. There will be links on the site to things like the Glow in the Dark t-shirt, Mel, if you're <laughs> so inclined yeah. to, to get some of the swag from there. Uh, and uh, so it's just one of those things that's that's fun. And it's basically, you know, given the storyline that Abraham Lincoln's hanging out with this gang of 80s punks and they got some virgins they're trying to hunt down and a homeless guy is going to try and save the world. So. Well, it's a good thing they're immortal because it's going to take them a while. I think so being bad today all right so that makes it my turn actually so my first recommendation today is going to be an app and um you watch game of thrones don't you um sadly oh, no, no it, we've we've talked about that a negotiated already. settlement for me to get high def tv <laughs> i had to give up premium channels and so uh to keep the overall price at a certain point so, yes no, i don't okay. watch game of thrones. <laughs> I've okay seen well you don't have to now <laughs> oh, there you go. I have an app for you Ooh. that uh, any fan of Game of Thrones, whether it's the it, – it's more based for the television show because I think they do tell you the actors that play the characters, but it doesn't use any of their 
uh, specific likenesses. It has its own artwork, but it's an app that's called World of Ice and Fire, and it is on for iDevices and Androids. And it's a neat little app I've been looking at that um, one of the neat aspects of it is if you are reading the books and you don't want to be spoiled as to what happens, it has a setting where you can set which up to which book it's going to give you spoilers. So that that's a very neat little uh, little gadget I thought because it's very hard to avoid spoilers and all of these fan based things that are out there whether it's a website you're looking at or I have to admit that right now I'm behind on The Walking Dead and I have to be very careful of what I watch or where I look on Twitter or who's a uh, timeline I look at on Twitter because I'm likely to get spoiled until I've seen the last episode. So this little app will go through and give you background and a pretty good synopsis of all the major events that have happened to a particular character up to whatever point you tell it to stop. So if you've only read the first two books in the series, you haven't been watching the TV show, and you don't want to be spoiled as to what happens to the character later, then you can set that little slider to only show you spoilers up to the second book. So it's got a very, very exhaustive index of everything in the series that I can tell. Everything I've looked for is in there. All of the characters, uh, places, um, specific towns or castles or ships or anything like that are all included in there. And you can go and read everything. So especially with Game of Thrones getting ready to start up again, if you can't quite remember where it left off, um, you can get into this app and look up who it is that you want to find out what happened to and give yourself a little jolt to remember this app will tell you everything it's got some very neat little artwork in it it's very pretty which everyone expects from anything that's associated with Game of Thrones but it is called George R.R. R. Martin's A World of Ice and Fire it is a free app to look at I think you get the first information for the first book free but if you want to go further than that, you have to unlock chapters. And it's not that bad. It's $4.99 to unlock all five of the presently available books. So it's really pretty cool. It gives you some links, I think, to a, uh, a board game type thing for Game of Thrones. So if you're a big Game of Thrones fan, I think you'll really like this app. It gives you a lot of information, um, gives you excerpts from the books, and... All the information you could ever want about any particular character that you want. So I didn't watch the entire last season of Game of Thrones just because I, by about the time it comes on, I'm in TV burnout mode after Walking Dead. And um, I end up just not, not having time to watch things. So I haven't seen the entire last season of Game of Thrones. And I'm actually a book behind on the series, but... I always figure I have time to catch up on the books because who knows when they're ever going to get finished. So it, it, for me especially, it's a good little tool because I forget. It's so long between when the books come out that I forget what has happened or where we left off with a particular character. And then, you know, he's got that some characters don't even appear in certain books, but they'll be back in a, in a later book. So I think this is a really neat little app. Um, I think it was featured recently on the iTunes store. So it's free to start out with. I think the most they're going to charge you is $4.99 to unlock all of the features in the app. And it's well worth a look if you're a fan of Game of Thrones, whether you watch the TV show, read the books, or do both. I think you'll enjoy it. And um, look through the artwork. I particularly liked a lot of that. And it gives you pretty pretty detailed synopsis of anything that you want to look at. Um, even if it's just a location that you want to look up, it will give you a very detailed history of it. And some of it is stuff I didn't even remember happening. But like I said, I've read, I read the books quite a while ago. And it was giving me some background information that I didn't really even remember ever being told. But maybe that was in the last book that I haven't read yet. So anyway... Um, a World of Ice and Fire, it's available for Android and iOS, 
check it out if you're a fan of Game of Thrones. I think you'll like it. Very cool. Free is my favorite, so I'll, I'll be glad to, to start off that way. And and, uh, and I suppose if you're not a fan of Game of Thrones and you don't want to read the books, you can get this app. It will tell you everything you need to know to fake it. There you go. That might be... So compare and contrast what you would get from from that versus uh, Wikipedia uh, in terms of is it is it I mean it's obviously a lot more depth than I mean although I mean well I don't know I really haven't looked at Wikipedia it might um, Wikipedia you know how it is it gives you a lot of stuff that may or may not be entirely accurate but what you're not going to get from Wikipedia is the protection from spoilers. Gotcha. Um, that's a that's a big thing. You know how how bad Game of Thrones people are about being spoiled. They're just as bad as Walking Dead people. And and I'm sure you probably saw that article recently about that teacher who was threatening her rowdy students with Game of Thrones spoilers. No, <laughs> yeah. no, I didn't. Okay, I think it was in um, Belgium. Uh, a teacher threatened her students. She asked them how many of them watched Game of Thrones, and a whole bunch of the class raised their hand. And she told them she had read all of the books, and if they didn't settle down, she was going to start writing on the board the next person that was going to die. So I don't know if it really worked for very long, but apparently it was amusing enough that it hit the news. So it's been on the Internet for the last few days. So I I I found it amusing. <laughs> Definitely. The, the um, yeah, and so there's there's the other people spoil, it. and it's so it's just like like with Walking Dead. Uh, so this is a spoiler, but it's if you haven't watched it since past season two of Walking Dead, <laughs> okay. Dale okay. dies. I'm past. <laughs> you're good there. <laughs> Dale <laughs> died. So hopefully I you're not that just. Is. Yeah, it's like what? <laughs> um, how's Shane doing? Uh, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, the episode where Dale died, uh, I've tried because what I've noticed is is so I, because I don't watch uh, Game of Thrones, I don't see as much of that exchange on people getting grumpy on spoilers. But because I do mm-hmm. watch uh, Walking Dead, particularly, and Mad Men's another one. The the West Coasters are very very hostile towards the Midwest and the East Coast. If you can't. If you if you start throwing out bunches of you know if some big big yeah. events happen in those shows, uh, they get mad. But for for Walking Dead, the episode that Dale, you know, I was so I tried to be careful, and I so I I stay real generic about like oh wow or right. didn't expect that, or I'll make a a joke, but it's enough not to give too much away. But R.I.P. Dale was trending in Twitter almost instantaneously right. on the East Coast showing. Which is why, if I'm not going to be able to catch Walking Dead live, I I steer very clear of Twitter, and uh, mm-hmm. we're fans of the We're Alive uh, Zombie podcast, and those get released on a Monday uh, around noon, and there are some people that can't seem to contain themselves <laughs> there either. Uh, so I've uh, I've basically kind of check out of my Twitter timeline on those Mondays, at least stay. Away. Yeah, I, I kind of just stay away from it for the most part because. Um, yeah. I'd just as soon, you know, not have that spoiled for me. So. Yeah, a lot of the Walking Dead stuff seems to have faded by the the following, uh, by the following morning. At least if I can avoid Twitter until after lunch, usually most of it is gone. But but then when the memes really start popping up, yeah. you know, they can they can give it away. So yeah, I tend to um be very scarce on on Twitter when I've been behind and I've been behind for the last couple of weeks so and yeah, you, uh, I have to say another one that people keep spoiling is Helix <laughs> because I my weekend television viewing has not been very good lately so oh. I have been missing you know my Friday and my Sunday shows and so I'm watching them later and I got spoiled on Helix <laughs> And I got very angry this last week. It wasn't by anybody that's on this podcast. Was, cause, no. Because um, yeah. I happen to, yeah. Because I do, for Walking Dead and um, uh, and when Breaking Bad was on, I did not tweet much during the show, particularly for Breaking Bad, because I just was riveted in watching it. And, wa- and Walking Dead, for the most part, I, 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 st- I don't. it's not like the bad sci-fi movies where, oh, if I miss something, it's not, you know, you, you want to pay attention. 
but uh, Helix, because the cast is so interactive, I do I do probably have a slightly higher volume of tweets during there. But try and stay try and stay general. But you know, yeah. <laughs> um, there I were would, some puns I had to do uh, <laughs> last time. Yeah. I was upset. It was somebody making a joke, and I was like, "No!" And I thought I was safe, and it was like Monday, and I was like, "Oh no, I've gone all weekend." <laughs> So anyway, but um, but I was talking about Game of Thrones, and people get very, uh, very upset when they got spoiled by the Red Wedding. I find it amusing having read the books when everybody goes, no, and I'm like, ha, 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 ha. I knew that was happening. As you're making your next glow-in-the-dark skull laughing. I am. I oh. am. No. Uh, yeah, my mother is a big Game of Thrones fan, and man, when the Red Wedding hit, it was, whew, she was upset. I was like, <laughs> of course, I tried to tell her when I first found out she was watching Game of Thrones. I, I tried to warn her. I said, don't get attached to anybody. Don't get attached to anybody. And spoiler alert, when Ned dies, <laughs> she was horrified. She thought he was the main character, and they killed him. I was like, yeah, I told you, don't get attached to anybody. Yeah, there's, there's a great meme. What's that actor's name? Um, Sean Bean, Bean. Yeah, there's a great yeah. meme out there of uh, the R.I.P. Sean Bean, where it's all the different characters he's played and yes. that died, which is many actually more, more than I was aware of. But uh, he, uh, he yeah, he seems to play dyers a lot, quite a, quite a bit. He does, and he's been in a lot of um, B type movies that I I have enjoyed. I can't remember the name of one, but he was the one that was supposed to be a post apocalyptic uh, Earth that we've. We have resorted to cavemen type uh, type living, and he's one of the last pseudo civilized people. And um, some virus that it looked like they cured with some sort of yellow powder, but you know nobody knew how to read anymore because reading was just a skill I guess you didn't need when you were a caveman. So um, it was. I'm not making it sound like a very interesting show, but I actually enjoyed it. But <laughs> it's not a recommendation. You know, you it's not actually it. that good. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, but check out that Game of Thrones app, A World of Ice and Fire. <laughs> if you like Game of Thrones, I think you'll enjoy it, and it's free to check out and try. So it's definitely worth a look for free. Very cool. All righty, so my second recommendation will be kind of a, sh a short one. Uh, it's cause, largely because it's mostly visual, uh, so you'll have to you know, take the recommendation and go enjoy it uh, that way. But um, so I'm going to recommend a website. So there's you know there's tons of websites out there: uh, BuzzFeed, Epic Fail, Fail Blog, WTF. There's all all these different sites out there that basically federate all sorts of quirky content, funny content, and those types of things. And they're all awesome, and they're all good. But I came across one not so long ago that I think excels uh, at hitting the really kind of useless, twisted stuff that I like quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> the The name of the website is sadanduseless.com. Sad, S-A-D, and useless, U-S-E-L-E-S-S. -E -E I like it already. Yes, uh, it's not my blog. <laughs> it's, it's not <laughs> anything related to me. It's actually um, uh, just a collection of things. And on the most recent, if you go to the homepage today, they've got. And I'm not a big fan of the breading of animals, but they've got more breaded dog pictures where they, you know, put the little hole in the bread and stick the animal's face <laughs> through there. So there's breaded dogs, uh, followed by a photo series on derpy dogs. Uh, scotch tape selfies, where people take scotch tape and kind of deform their face and take a selfie with it, followed by Derpy Cat. And there is a remarkably cool Derpy Cat as the cover picture for Derpy Cats, which I think will be part of our blog post <laughs> because it's a great Derpy Cat. And then, yeah, and then just other cool things like uh, heavy metal albums with googly eyes, where they just basically take a bunch of heavy metal albums and put the little googly eyes on the, the skulls and the zombies and all that. Uh, and there's a really nice one of Megadeth's Rust in Peace uh, that's available off the homepage. It gives you a very good sense of what uh, heavy metal thinks. So it's the Time Waster website, tons of good pictures. 
Um, you know, if you want to see a series of photos of fruits and vegetables that forgot how to be plants, where it's basically fruits, fruits and vegetables making faces like the the pepper that looked like Sylvester Stallone, or then or these here, they've got a couple peppers that just look like they're screaming at you. Um, the uh, there's just all sorts of good things. So lots. I, I of like fun. the low budget cosplay that they have down here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, the low budget. That was, and so you, you get the, and, and so, you know, for folks listening, the, just to give you a tip of what, like, that low budget cosplay will consist of, think of Davy Jones from, uh, the Pirates uh, of the Caribbean Pirates movies, Pirates of the Caribbean mini movies, and so put on kind of a somewhat similar dirty or hat or take a, actually, looks like he does, he took a rug and used paper clips to make it look like Jones's hat, and then a couple sets of hands hanging down in front of your face to create the tentacles, and voila, yes. you've got cosplay. Low budget cosplay. Excellent. So it it's a fun site. I'm sure there are times although I, I don't recall a whole lot of not safe for work content. Some of these sites will go hard into that on occasion. I'm sure there's probably some times when they make the run, but most of these things are just they're mostly sad and useless as the site, you know, I think they stay consistent with their brand and uh, it's a great way to spend time. There's a a really cool an occasion they'll do these where where are you at on bit strips, Mel? What's your what's your official position on bit strips? Are you familiar? Bit strips is not available without a Facebook logon. So, seeing as how I do not do Facebook, I have not done bit strips. I have downloaded it, but I, I haven't used it because it requires a Facebook login. Yeah, it. Um, I, I'm I am a mixed opinion of them because I. At one point, I was going to potentially recommend BitStrip as one of the things. But as I kind of dealt with it more, I started to realize it's really more the haven, the people who who want to, I think, be funny but and want to kind of be artistic. And it's a, an app that can let you feel miserably at both. <laughs> so, really mean. <laughs> yeah. It just, it's just, yeah, I guess, you know, and so that's the part is I've kind of looked at it as a way for me to kind of lash out against people. And I think that is a good use. Uh, that's what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, that's good, right, right in my wheelhouse. But it's, but you know, they, but they've got some good bit strips on uh, sad and useless. Sometimes, like the current one, uh, the Bills bit strips would be kind of taking that, and usually you get a lot of people. It's like Bob likes hearing, you know, Bob and Sandy are best friends, and there's this little cartoon of the two people giving each other a high five, and you get to create your own avatar. And of course, everybody's avatar is significantly taller, thinner, and better looking than um, than they are. Uh, and but this, they've got a bit strip out here. Bill and it's like Bill gets shot on his trip to Detroit, which I thought was you know now that's a good bit strip to me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I I heard that they were working um, on alternate logins, and so I'm on the list for whenever that happens. But I I've probably said it before. I am not a fan of services or apps that only allow Facebook logins. So just me being different. I don't like Facebook, and so. If that's the only way that I can join your little club, then I don't want to be in it. Well, the BitStrip Club is not one to miss. There's not not much of one to miss. So you can <laughs> wait for that login, but don't worry about it too much. You'll be uh, glad to know, sad and useless, while it does include a like button, um, and they've got over 100,000 likes, so they're doing okay there. <laughs> uh, but they also, you can follow them on Twitter and follow I, them on G+. Yeah, I just follow them on G+, as well. So that's my second and final recommendation. <laughs> okay, my second one is going to be uh, pretty short and sweet. It is foodie related, sort of. Uh, Kelly, you're you're a business type guy. Do you use Evernote? I, yeah, I kind of suck at it, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> well, um, I've never gotten really into using Evernote. I have an Evernote account. Um, but I never really kind of got the hang of using it. So I am not entirely certain how long this has been out. I'm led to believe it's somewhat recent. But they have another app that's called EverFood, and it's the Evernote Foodie app. It's designed for basically foodies who want to go to places and take pictures of their food and remember what restaurant it was at and what it's called and and things like that. Now, I don't do that kind of stuff, one, because I, I live out in the middle of nowhere, and our restaurants are usually barbecue places, and being a vegetarian, I don't frequent those establishments very often. 
So what I like it for, though, is it makes it rather easy to collect recipes online from different websites. If, if any of you get online looking for recipes, you know there's 10 million different places to find um, a good recipe. You'll get them in emails. Pinterest is a big place. You'll see them on Twitter, all sorts of things. And it's sometimes hard to collect all of those in a place that you can then import them into some sort of recipe app. Uh, there are a million different recipe apps out there, but few of them do web imports very well. Uh, I will say that there is one that I'm somewhat familiar with that I have used briefly that is Android only called Chef Tap that does seem to handle web importing very well, but I am an iOS user, and we don't seem to have one that works quite that that well and seamlessly. You're, you're an iOS user for now. <laughs> I've been there for several years, point. and I, I'm thinking it might be a little um, costly for me to decide to switch and replace all my apps in Android, but I will not, um, I won't rule that out. So I, I am uh, I am exploring Android a little bit more than I have have contemplated in the past. So and I have to say I do like Chef Tap and I do like um, technology that can give me a place to keep all of my recipes in an app that I have with me when I'm at the grocery store because I am terrible at making lists before I go to the store. If I do make a list, I forget it. So when I get to the store, I don't have it with me. So this little this little app, Everfood, lets you you install a web clipper just like you would for Evernote in whatever browser that you use on your computer, and you clip that and you set your category for it to go into. You make a new a new category for recipes, and it automatically sends the entire thing and saves it in that folder for recipes. So then you get in, you open up this app and it's very slick looking and pretty. It's got it opens up with a bunch of different sliding type tabs for either you know the restaurants that you go to and then there's the recipe one which is really the only one that I look at. And you get a nice little picture of the recipe if you if you have imported one that came with the nice little picture. It's all visual. So each recipe that you've put in there has its own little its own little picture and if you are the type that's really highly organized as you're putting these in you can tag them with all the different things that you would want to you know whether it's a dessert or a main course or you know main ingredient or something the only thing that this one doesn't do it's not it, it doesn't make like an ingredients list for you to take to the grocery store that's a big thing that some of the recipe apps say that they do for you, but it's so hard to get your recipes into them that you don't ever import the recipes that you need, so it can't really give you a shopping list because you haven't bothered to import your recipes because it's such a pain. So this one is very simple to use. It's not perfect, but I found it really simple, and I put in like 30 recipes just from some that I had bookmarked in my browser and imported them in probably... I will say that I didn't spend more than 20 minutes getting this app set up and figuring out how to use it, which I'm not an Evernote user, so I really had to look at what buttons to push, and I even had to install the Web Clipper. And I probably imported all of those, I think, in about 20 minutes. And so they were all there, and if I had made it to the grocery store, they would have been right there in my phone for me to look up and go, okay, I want to make this and here's the ingredients that it needs and make sure that I left the store with those ingredients. So it's not perfect, but if you're an iOS user, I definitely think you need to check it out um, and save yourself some time on the importing into a bunch of other these of these other apps that, you know, to import into them, it's it's so painstaking. It could take you 20 minutes to import one recipe by having to select the part that you want and import it in and and do all of that. If that fits your particular brand, then then awesome. I don't spend that much time on it. I like to just collect my stuff and have it someplace where I can look it back up again. And I do like the pretty pictures because food should be pretty, even though any food that I cook is not pretty. That's just a default, but it usually tastes okay. It may look like crap, 
but it tastes okay in the end. So Everfood by Evernote. Um, Evernote's been around for a long time, so you know the app's not going to just disappear on you, and if it's not working, they're going to figure it out. So I suggest you look it out, look it up if you're into recipes and get a bunch of your recipes on the web. It will keep them all in a safe, secure little place so that you always have them. Yeah, and the uh, kind of on the pictures and food front. It, so I've, 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 <laughs> I think I've fairly clearly established, <laughs> at least my position on Twitter, uh, is I have very limited interest in pictures of what you had for lunch or dinner or those types of things that the, the folks that, that just, hey, here's what this was really, yum. oh, yum, this was good. But I got to give props, uh, uh, you know, one of our, one of our, uh, our guests on the show, Alicia Holm, um, who's a, a foodie, also Mel, uh, she, um, she will on occasion, apparently her, some of the stuff she cooks, it is really purdy, <laughs> and, and, yeah. and uh, she'll throw. It's it's typically things that she's done, or she's at a place, but it's not every day. And when it's done, it's it's at least some thought went into the picture. So so <laughs> that, that I give I give a few people exception to 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 go through, but which she always kind of double checks with me when I start railing on food pics <laughs> on Twitter, which I do on occasion. No, not you. You're fine. <laughs> but yeah. all those yeah. other people. I don't normally, I, and I wouldn't really say that I'm a big foodie. Um, I, I, I have my, my things that I like to make, and I cook quite a bit. But if I post a picture of food on Twitter, it's something I've made that I am damn proud of. So if I put a picture of food up on Twitter, then you better tell me that looks awesome. <laughs> because it's <laughs> something I probably worked really hard on, <laughs> and it probably failed miserably. <laughs> but... Like, so like the noted. last, uh, yeah, like the last bunt cake I I made. I upended that puppy and it oozed all out as soon as I unpanned it, <laughs> and it turned into like pudding. But it oh. was good. <laughs> well, there you go. That's that's the important part. It was good after I put it back in the oven for a little while. It looked like crap, but I didn't care. It tasted good. I like Everfood. Um, it's quick and easy to use. And it's it's been a good substitute for the probably 10 or 15 different recipe apps that I have tried. They all have their ups and downs. Some do some things better than others. But Everfood serves me, serves me pretty well in that it is incredibly simple to clip a recipe from any web page. I haven't had anything that it didn't clip because that's what Evernote does. That's what they're good at. And it's going to save that that whole page so that you're never you never forget to get a particular step because I've done that before when I've had to do that individual selecting of steps and ingredients. You're never going to miss anything because it clips the entire page, which can be cool. sometimes annoying that you have all this blank space at the bottom. But I can live with that because I have the entire recipe there. It's good. I would check it out for perhaps the more casual of us, but it does have some real foodie related aspects to the app that I really haven't explored because that's not my thing. I just wanted the recipes. I wanted some place to save and collect recipes that would be searchable. So it serves my purposes and I have enjoyed it. I've been using it for about a week or so now. So Very cool. I like it. Excellent. All righty. So that takes us to our recently social revised media. social media recommendations. Yes. Um, uh, you want to kick us off for this week? Because I'm totally sure. cheating, so okay. you probably should go first. My uh, my Twitter recommendation this week is, dun, 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 let me get it up, at Indy, I-N-D-Y, quotes, one. It Like it sounds, you might suspect, it is Indiana Jones quotes. And that's all they do. They tweet all day, every day, lots and lots of tweets that are just little snippets of a quote from any Indiana Jones movie you have seen. So they always bring a smile to my face because I... In the fourth one? I, pardon me? Crystal Skull? Do they, do, they ignore, do they ignore the existence of Crystal Skull or... You know, I can't say yes. Yes, they do. They do include Crystal Skull because I saw the one the other day about about him not going to college. I did see that one, so they do acknowledge Crystal Skull. Yeah, it's 
It's a question. But okay. it, it, it's an Indiana Jones movie, so they have included it. And uh, it always brings a smile to my face because even the bad ones, I, even the bad ones I enjoyed. I mean, I didn't like uh, Temple of Doom either, though it was a far cry better than Crystal Skull. But anyway, you can't win all of them. I love Indiana Jones as a character, despite whatever horrible situation they put him in. So I love Indiana Jones. So at Indy Quotes 1. And I think they generally will follow you back if that is something you're concerned with. Yeah, it looks, and I am. Uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> I I notice it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, it does look like because they're, um, they're almost dead even on their, they're at 655 followers and 654. They're following 655 and they've got 654 followers. So it looks yeah. pretty close. And I just followed them. So we'll, I'll let you know. But, All uh, right. You let me know if they there. don't follow you. I'll have to talk to them. Okay, I will. I will. Uh, I will do that because it. They did already by just 12 minutes ago uh, from this broadcast time. They actually did one of my favorite quotes that I actually use occasionally, which is the "He chose poorly." <laughs> you know, so, I know. Uh, that's a, that's, that's a, disappointment a, on that old man's face when he says that. So. That's a good one there. So, so my cheat. So. Two rights don't make a wrong, but in my opinion, two cheats make a social media recommendation. So I'm going to recommend at Sad and Useless and <laughs> at Kill Vamp Lincoln, Kill V A M P Lincoln, as my double dose of Twitter recommendations that may be related to my recommendations today. But that's the Twitter account for the obviously the Kill Vampire Lincoln and the Transient, uh, and then Sad and Useless on Twitter, which you absolutely you need to follow to get that nice fast path into the derpy cat picks. Which yes, because that was a very cute derpy cat. That's that was a very cute derpy cat. So, yeah. um, so that'll be a that'll be a good thing. Well, Mel, uh, I think that about does it for today's show. Um, yes, I think I think we've covered the gamut of things to cover today. We've covered Abraham Lincoln, Game of Thrones, Indiana Jones. And sad and useless. <laughs> and sad and useless. There we go. Bad cosplay. Derpy cats. Derpy cats. What? Uh, there's really there's there's nothing else. We we have covered the entire internet tonight. Internet. One yeah. in one show. Amazing. That's right. Okay. The internet is now over. Yes. Hit restart. Um, yeah. So uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Again, as we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, go to. Nurtureandsupport.net to catch the podcast. You can get us on iTunes. Send us emails at nurtureandsup at gmail.com. Love to hear your recommendations. We'll do our best to, to read them on the show. We'll uh, be on a quest to keep looking for a couple other guests here and there, uh, mix it up a little bit. And um, I have nothing else to say. Mel? I think that about covers it. Let us know what you think of our nifty new uh, theme song if you – missed it on our last episode and I'm glaring silently at you if you did but uh, that's about it let us know what you think of it as long as it's nice don't make Mel cry and yeah, we may have to we may have to do a quick little blog post and put out a couple of mp uh, threes as ringtone options because I think the the well, which is nurture and support is a I actually have it on my phone thought about you <laughs> see as a ringtone uh, that and I think we also need to go back and get uh, Jean's outstanding when she was describing yes uh, the hair <laughs> the hair uh, her heartfelt outstanding. I think is another nice little bite that you could use to let you know when your next text message comes in. Absolutely. You hear Jean's going outstanding. So we, you know, cool. we might we might have to even look at incorporating that in the next edition of the uh, intro and outgoing themes at some point because that was yeah. truly an outstanding, outstanding. It was. Yeah, or we might be able to drop it in the middle of the podcast at some point. So we want we'll to draw the point. we randomly throwing in Jean saying, outstanding. Outstanding. At the end yeah. of each of our recommendations, maybe we can kind of, <laughs> then you know you're done. Something. Uh, and Jean's, if you're listening and you don't like that idea, then just let us know. Outstanding. <laughs> Too All bad, right, we got the audio. <laughs> that's true. You shouldn't have come on the show if you weren't going to yeah. let us use it. So I think that's uh, about all we have for this glorious episode of Nurture and Support. Come back next week, and we will have more awesome and cool for you. 
Thank you for listening, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Mission is boring. Terminated.